Hi, this is Caleb with Mastering.com. If you're a subscriber, welcome back. If you're new, welcome. I hope to earn your subscription today. Uh, today we're going to be talking about compression for mastering. I think we're going to try to take a big 30,000 foot view and just step back a little bit and talk about the mindset we need when entering into a mastering session when it comes to compression. And then I want to get a little bit more specific. I want to jump into the DAW. I have a bunch of songs that we're going to actually work on together. And we're going to get into the specifics of how to adjust attack and release, your uh, threshold, your ratio, things like that, based upon different components of the song. It's going to be a lot of fun. I hope it's really informative. But first, let's roll the intro. All right, so mindset. Typically, I like to think about compression for mastering in two phases. The first phase is assessing the transients of the song. I can listen and often see them visually in the waveform. And the transient information is going to inform how I set my ratio, knee, and ultimately the threshold of my compressor. Then in the second phase, I want to assess the characteristics of the song. And by characteristics, I mean tempo, style, rhythm, complexity, feel, and the overall goal or intention of the track. And the characteristics are going to inform more of the attack and release settings that I use. So the transients inform ratio, knee, and threshold, and the characteristics inform attack and release. Let's jump into the DAW and get a little bit more specific about how to use all these tools and the mindset effectively. All right. So now let's give some visual interpretation to what I was just talking about. And let me pull up a compressor here. So this is just a basic compressor, but it has all of the components we will be uh, dealing with and uh, it's clearly labeled. So it should work great for what we're trying to accomplish here. The first part of the mindset I spoke about was about perceiving the transients of a song and having that inform my ratio, knee and threshold. So let's dig into that a little bit more. Typically, the range of ratio we use in mastering is going to be something around 1.2 to up to, you know, as much as 3 to 1. So 1.2 to 1, up to 3 to 1. And when I think about ratio, I'm thinking of it almost like the effectiveness of the compressor. So the higher the ratio, uh, the more of the energy of the track it's grabbing onto and manipulating per dB of gain reduction. So it's just being more effective the higher the ratio I set. What this means for us is if we're dealing with a really transient heavy song, we'll want to typically use a higher ratio. So something like three, as opposed to something like 1.2. And then the other thing to watch out for is the gain reduction, which will be demonstrated by the needle here. And that's controlled by a few different things, but ultimately can be dialed in with the threshold. On a song with few transients, we'd want to use as little as 1 dB of gain reduction. Sometimes even none at all. So there's been situations where I haven't really used any. On a more transient heavy song, we can use as much as 3 or 4 dB of reduction. So on a smooth song, we might have a ratio of something like 1.4, 1.3 and then only be doing 1 dB of gain reduction. Because we don't want the compressor doing much. It's already smooth, there's no transient sticking out, so we, we sort of want the compressor to stay out of the way. But then on a song with huge transients, we might use as much as 3 to 1 ratio and might be doing 3 to 4 dB of gain reduction just to tame those aggressive transients. And then typically the knee down here will follow the ratio and gain reduction. Zero down here will be more aggressive all the way up to one which will be uh, more smooth. So the knee is just making minor adjustments in the smoothness and the aggressiveness of how the uh, compressor is interacting with the sound. So we'll just follow if it's if it's three to one and we want three to four uh, dB of gain reduction, maybe we'd have something more aggressive. It's a really smooth song, maybe we'd do something like this. So that's the first thing we assess. The next thing we assess is the characteristics of the song. And as I mentioned before, that means the tempo, the style, the beat, uh, the busyness. And this will all change my attack and release times. If you're not familiar with attack and release, a faster attack is going to grab the transient earlier. So it's right when the transient's starting, it's starting to grab hold with the compressor. And so it's controlling the transient 
Uh, but the faster and faster you make it, it also takes some of the ener energy away from the transient because it's compressing it. So it gives you more control, but also it smooths things over a little bit. On the other hand, a slower attack will do the opposite. It will let you retain that initial impact and the brightness and the aggressiveness of the transient, and it will interact with it later. So if you want things to be more punchy, uh, more aggressive, more bright, usually you'd want something with a slower attack. As for release, a fast release will actually help you retain energy impact and perceived loudness because it's returning to nominal uh, quicker. So it's prepared for the next transient faster. Uh, on the other hand, a slow release, it's slow to get back to nominal. And so that will actually start to smooth things over a little bit more. It actually acts more like smoothness or glue as we sometimes call it. So that's kind of the basics of attack and release. But now let's look at a few examples here of these different songs I have. I have a few different examples, uh, different songs with different types of characteristics and different types of transients. And then we can uh, dial in some of the compressor settings for each. So now let's zoom in a little bit. This first song is a song by an artist, Nate Bradshaw, and the song is called Mute a Bad Dream. We can see just going into it already that compared to some of these other ones, there's not a lot of transient information, and as we listen to it, I think we'll find that it's a much smoother track. Let's listen to the characteristics of this song now, and then let's break down how we'd approach applying a compressor to this. Just do what you just So you can tell right off the bat, it's a pretty smooth song, not a lot of uh, big transients or anything like that. I'm hearing a, a pretty smooth bass. The vocals are very uh, washed out and reverby. It also does have this like kind of kick and uh, snap thing going on that we want to make a mental note of. But let's start with the ratio threshold and the knee. Something that is um, already really smooth, doesn't have a lot of transient information. We're actually going to want a, just a lower ratio setting. We don't need it to do as much. We don't want it to do as much. Um, and so we're going to have a very light setting on that. Uh, the knee will follow. So we want something um, really soft. So we'll put that all the way up. Now with the threshold, uh, it's not so much about where we put this threshold at. This is all just going to depend on where the song is. And when we're when we're working with something that doesn't have a lot of transient information, typically what we're going to do is is not have as much gain reduction happen. And honestly, with a song that's really smooth, uh, maybe we would only have like one dB, but we'll have a little bit here. So I'm going to apply this. We'll just kind of see what's happening. Just do what you chose. So now let's think about the characteristics of the song. So very smooth. There is that clap and the snap thing going on. Now, what you typically want with a, a smoother song is a faster attack because there's not very many transients. And if you have it too slow, then it's, it's not going to really do anything at all. In this case, though, I don't want it to attack and start to uh, reduce the peaks of those snaps and kicks. I like those. I want those to be present. I don't want to really smooth those over. I think they're already sitting really nicely in the mix. So I'm actually going to go for a more medium type of uh, attack on this. And then when we're talking about release, a medium to slow release is totally fine. Glue will be just fine. So I might pick something not too heavy, but just like this. And now what I'm going to do is watch this needle here, and I'm going to see if it starts kind of dancing with the track. Because another thing you do with, uh, with release in particular is it's the opportunity you have to kind of allow the compressor to enter into the groove of the song, right? So let's see if this starts interacting in a way that seems like it's dancing with that the beat and the and the snap. Oh, you just do what you just do. You knew. So that's that's dancing pretty well there. You can see that it's moving with the the beat of the of the kick and that snap. That's really all you do with a compressor on a song like this. It doesn't need a lot. We don't want to impart 
a lot of compression in something that's already smoothed out like this. There's no need to do that. So let's get out of the way and let the song uh, do what it's good at already. All right, let's move on. So this is a slightly different song. This one's more of an indie pop vibe, uh, indie pop rock from a band called Bathyscaphe. And it's a song called No Fair. And we're going to assess it and just look for characteristics. And we can also listen for transient information. <laughs> So what do we hear with this song, right? Uh, again, not a lot of transient information that's uh, really big, nothing like what we're seeing down here. It's closer to this one already, though slightly louder. But we also notice that there's a lot more going on. Uh, in terms of characteristics, There's it's a, it's a denser mix. There's a lot of different percussion elements going on. Um, and the vocal's kind of smooth and tucked in the back. So we, we need to keep these things in mind as we go. So let's start with the ratio. Uh, with something like this, maybe we'll do a little bit more. It probably has slightly more transients than the other one, um, but still not a lot. And then let's get that set in there nicely. <laughs> So I think with something like this, maybe we could look at 2 dB with what's going on. But we're, what I really want to get into is the characteristics that I'm hearing. I want the compressor to not grab too heavily onto all those percussive elements, but I might actually make a faster release so that it returns to nominal and actually have it bring the energy. Let's see how this goes, and we'll just kind of dial it in. <laughs> See how we've greatly affected the character of the song just by, and we're not even compressing that much here. I mean, it's just a couple of dB, but yet we're really adding a lot of life, or at least enhancing kind of the goal of this song, which is that vibrant kind of uh, all those instruments. I want to bring that energy out of the song. And so, yeah, I might go with a little slower attack on something like this. Um, if, if the goal was different and you wanted to bring that vocal forward a little bit more, maybe you would attack put the attack higher. It just kind of depends on what we're trying to accomplish here, right? But you have a lot of control over the character of, this, of the song based upon the attack and the release. So uh, that's something to keep in mind. All right, let's move on. So this one's going to be totally different. This is a song by Yara, and it's a song called Hold It. And we can see right off the bat, this has much bigger peaks and valleys. There's a lot more transient information. We're going to be compressing this a lot more to get it down to kind of a, a you know, a, a more gluey state, right? So let's dig in. We'll see uh, how the song sounds and be listening for characteristics here. See, already what I'm hearing is that the, the kick and the snare are taking up a lot of the energy here. And just like I was saying in the other track, if I wanted to bring that vocal forward more, maybe I would want to, you know, have a faster attack and, and bring some of the the, the attack of the, of the snare and the kick back so that the vocal comes forward more. Let's see if we can accomplish that in this track. So let's, um, we'll set the ratio. It's going to be a bit higher, definitely, maybe up to even three to one. And then we'll uh, we'll go from here. So let's go with a faster attack. Let's see here. Listen to what happens when we go through a faster attack. Here is it going to bring the the vocal forward more? So 
here how we grabbed a hold of some of that a little bit better. A medium release and a faster attack on this seems to pull that vocal forward a little bit. We had to pull the, the ratio, or sorry, the threshold back a little bit because we want, don't want more than maybe three or four dB of compression happening here. But we know that we need quite a bit and that we need that three or four and we need a higher ratio. It's not just three or four dB. It's also three to four dB of reduction at a higher ratio. So there's actually more energy being taken out of it. So we're doing a lot more to kind of blend this down. Um, let's, let's hear it on and off and see if we can hear that change in the vocal. Totally pulls them right forward. That would be the goal probably with something like this if I was approaching it as a mastering engineer. So I hope you're kind of seeing what we're doing. Let's move along. So this is a song called Pencil and Paper, and it's actually by Slow Wave uh, Studios, which is uh, my production partner and I. So this was a song we made during uh, quarantine and the pandemic when we were sampling things around the house and we were really bored. So we can tell already this one has probably already had some sort of limiting on, um, but we're definitely seeing more transient information than we were on some of these, even though it's not as maybe much as this. So let's dig in and see what we'd want to do in something like this. All right, so this is kind of interesting because uh, it's definitely a big uh, kick and snare. It's really in your face, but that's the point of this style of song. It's a it's a beat, you know. It's a it's an instrumental. There's not a vocal to compete with. There's not big synth or a lot going on to compete with. We want this kick to be really in your face. We want the the uh, snare to be really in your face. So we do want to, you know, compress it and level it out a little bit. I'd maybe even just pull this back a hair. Um, but then I also don't want the attack to take that away. I don't want the attack to be grabbing onto all those transients. I actually want it to hit really hard. So I'm going to have a more medium uh, style attack on this and medium style release on this. So let's listen to what that would do. I turn it up. something like that all right get the compression in there but don't take uh, too much away from the kick and snare that's probably what people are looking for in a track like this all right hopefully that makes sense moving along the last track here another one of uh, our uh, quarantine beats it's called middle east and this was made with a uh, an instrument my uh, family member sent from Tajikistan that we sampled and made a beat out of. So we can see there's a lot going on here, a lot of really fast transients we can see. Um, not as transient heavy as uh, Hold It was. Um, and so we're going to probably make some different choices with the ratio on this. Um, probably closer to where we already are, maybe two to two. Um, and then... Let's listen and see if we can hear some characteristics that we would want to honor in this track. So in a lot of ways, this has a lot of that same type of uh, really fast instrumental, a lot of energy that we want to honor in this one. Again, it's a beat. There's nothing it's competing with. We want the energy to be there. We don't want the the, uh, uh, the attack to grab too much. So I'm probably going to have a similar type of attack thing, um, maybe even slower, and then maybe even a slower release because I really want to, to put the energy into that. So let's let's hear this sound. Let's try to turn it off.
right, so that's what I do on a track like this. So hopefully this is helpful seeing just kind of in real time some of the choices we'd make based on transient information and the characteristics of the song. So to sum up, first I want to look at transients, right? If there's any big transients, I'm going to want a higher ratio and more gain reduction because I'm going to need the compressor to do more work taming those transients. And if there weren't many transients, then I don't really need or want the compressor to do much at all. Think of ratio kind of like effectiveness. The higher the ratio, the more effective the compressor is being per every dB of gain reduction. Our ratio settings uh, for mastering are typically between 1.2 to 1 and 3 to 1. Uh, 1.2 for a gentle compression, 3 to 1 for a more aggressive compression. And then I'll set my threshold level. Turning down the threshold will give you more gain reduction. Turning it up will give you less. The general rule is a transient heavy song will need more gain reduction, maybe something like 3 to 4 dB. A smoother song will need less, as little as 1 dB, or even in some cases, none. Then if your compressor has a knee, just kind of follow the ratio settings, honestly. A softer knee to a lower ratio will help the smoothness and a harder knee to a higher ratio will help it be more aggressive. All right, and then we looked at the character of the song and how it relates to attack and release. So here are some general rules about attack for you to keep in mind. Slow attack will add more impact, punchiness, and brightness because it's letting more of the impactful part of the transient through um, before it engaging. A faster attack will interact earlier and tame that punch and impact, but it also tightens up and controls the transient more, which sometimes we want too. So all of this can be a good or a bad thing depending on what the song needs. And on the other side, we have release. Think of release as affecting more of the sustain or breath or groove of the song, or it can allow the compressor to enhance clarity and energy. Typically, slow release adds more dynamic control and smoothness or what we might call glue. Uh, a fast release gives more excitement, aggression, and perceived loudness. You also want the release setting to cause the compressor to enhance the groove of the song. Used correctly, it will help the compressor breathe the way the song breathes. So keep that in mind. We want it, we want it to lock it in with the, the song's kind of feel and groove and tempo so that it's breathing with it and not working against it. So hopefully this gives you a nice mindset for the next time you're using compression and mastering. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, comment below if you have any questions. Um, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Until next time, peace.